All right, so today we're going to take a look at two flashlights from Through Night. Now, these are kind of different from my normal fare. These are specialized tools, and they are very essential tools to different people. What they are for is doing a couple things. Number one, searching for someone at a distance. These are incredible at this purpose. And also, they are very good in emergency situations when you're trying to be found, because both of these flashlights have the ability to get somebody's attention from well over, well, many thousands of feet. So this one down here has a reach of over 600 meters, okay? So really, really, really far distance. And as you can see, it is quite small. Here's an example relative to the size of the um, Olight i5R. So you can see this is not a very big flashlight, very much pocketable. And this one, which is not all that pocketable, the Catapult Pro, um, this thing can reach a thousand meters with a truly incredible output of 250,000 candela and almost 3,000 lumens of output. So this is, these are like rockets. They are absolutely the lightsabers of the light world. There are other ones like them, and they are very fun to own and play with, but they are also very useful tools. So we're going to take these two out and just kind of talk about the maximum beam pattern and how what you're going to see. It'll be sort of a non-scientific test, but it is really cool to show what these can do. So let's go ahead and start with that, and then we'll come back and talk about the user interface and everything so else. So these three flashlights, so we have the Warrior X Turbo, and then we have the Catapult Mini and the Catapult uh, Pro. So first off, let's start with the Warrior X Turbo. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you down at the end of this road. It's about ah, maybe a thousand feet. No joke. So what I want to just show is just you can see all the light pollution. So obviously there's that. But just to give you an idea of output, there's the turbo of the Warrior X Pro, which has 270,000 candela. So it's basically a laser beam. You can see all the way down to the end of the street, all the way up into those trees without any problem. Now, that's the Warrior X Turbo, right? Now let's take a look at the Through Night, and this is the um, Catapult Pro. Wow, that's really good too. And what I like about these, you see how there's a secondary beam on the edges? It's a lot less bright. It's just enough to kind of light your way. That's really nice. And you know, there's a much wider beam coverage from this distance. Pretty cool. Now, last thing is, this is what's amazing, is this little dinky um, one. And this is a different kind of lens, right? But check this out. Still ridiculously good. I mean, I'm still able to reach all the way out there. Now, all of these flashlights can actually reach further than this. But, I mean, how much more do you need? This thing fits in your pocket. Now, what it doesn't have is notice there's no secondary, like, beam. It's just one column. So, there's not nothing being lost to the edges. So, that can be both a positive and a negative, and we'll talk about that in a minute things in a little bit different order here but I it's a different kind of flashlight than I normally review on the channel so I think it was worth just mixing it up so starters let's talk about the warrior X turbo in relevance to these other two this is very much a tactical flashlight I mean it really is designed for that it has only two modes a, a half power and then a full power mode and that's it and it's designed to, you know, with this ring to be able to grip it while you have a firearm or it actually has the system that allows the push button and be mounted onto a, a rifle of some sort. That's kind of what this is designed for. In the case of these two, it's a little bit different. Now, what we've been doing with flashlights is kind of doing a rating system and we'll be continuing that with this as well. And we'll just kind of do both at the same time, starting with quality. Both of these are excellent in fit and finish, um, but what we usually do here is, as long as I'm not seeing anything really out of the ordinary, this will be getting a three out of five stars for both of them. Really well done. All the contacts are done well. 
The threading is not gritty in any way. Uh, in both cases, the lenses are really nicely done. There doesn't seem to be any glue or anything out of place. Solid. Okay, now the next part here is user interface. And the user interface is both similar and different, and different between these two. So both of them have access to a moonlight mode. So if you hold press from off, you get this ultra low output, which honestly, I kind of like. I especially like it, I think, in the Pro model where you get a secondary ring, which you can kind of see there in addition to the center hotspot, okay? Now, in low light conditions where your eyes are completely, you know, acclimated to darkness, that secondary ring is going to be incredibly useful to looking close while the more concentrated beam kind of helps direct you to where you want to go. So it's kind of a combination. And so it's, it's a multifunctional tool. That is the big difference between these different types of uh, emitters. You can see that the lenses are completely different, whereas this is just, there's nothing between the outer lens and the emitter. I'm sorry, the, yeah, the LED. You can see here that this is a, this is some sort of plastic lens that actually focuses the beam. So it's a little bit different in how it works. Now, both of these, when you click the button one time, will go to the last memorized mode, either low, medium, or high. So in this case, I think this is the low, medium, and then high, and then it comes back to low. And it will come back on in that mode every time you turn it back on. Now that is sort of true with this, sort of. Now if I click it one time, it will come in wherever it was left off. But unlike the mini, this has a continuous output adjustment. So when it gets to the top, it will click twice to let you know that you're at the top of the spectrum. And then when you hold it again, it will then go back down. Now at any point, I can zoom up and then lift my finger and then zoom down again. So you don't have to go all the way to the top of the range in order to come back down. I love that feature. It's something that I got used to with Endurial and Endurial 2.0. And it's now, it's also present in the Catapult Pro. Really, really nice. So, great user interfaces. These are at least a four out of five, maybe even a five out of five when you consider the application of what these are trying to accomplish. So, great user interfaces for these flashlights. Okay, so next part, output. Okay, hard to explain output on a flashlight designed to throw a beam very, very far distance. You can't just look at it from lumens, you also have to look at the light concentration or the candela. So for the lower, for the smaller of the two, which is very small by the way, um, it has around 700 lumens at max, but it has almost 70,000 candela. That is a lot of light. And it will reach a maximum of almost 600, 600 meters? 600 meters. Okay, I'll put a conversion here for you guys. <laughs> okay, uh, 600 meters. Pretty impressive to say the least for a flashlight this small. And for the larger version, this will reach almost 3,000 lumens on turbo, which is 2,700. And then that will run for nine minutes before dropping down to 961 lumens for additional 90 minutes. And the maximum Beam intensity for this flashlight is 252,000 candela. We're talking big numbers, guys. This is the kind of light that if you get this in somebody's face on maximum output will genuinely damage somebody's eyes. So these are not toys. They are tools, and they are very good for what they are designed for. We'll get to that in just a minute, but just want to be aware these are serious when we're talking about output. Now, uh, run times, actually really good. I'll just flash the whole thing in front of you here so you can take a look, feel free to pause. Really, really good for the Catapult Mini, um, just based on the battery, the type of battery it is, which is an 18, uh, 350. Um, Other flashlights with this battery type, that's really similar or they tend to be even less than that. So this, this looks really good uh, from what I can tell. Now, um, when it comes to the Catapult 
Pro. See, I don't have a great context because this is a different battery than I'm familiar with. So this battery, which is replaceable, is a 26650. So this is even better, bigger than a 21700. And uh, it's a big boy. Same capacity as a lot of those batteries, but just very big. And so I don't have a great uh, reference point. This is my only flashlight with a battery like this. But nonetheless, um, very impressive that it was able to have the kind of run times it does. And I will then, of course, showcase it here. Now, um, last thing, versatility. Uh, so here's, here's a weird one. This is not really a, uh, a flashlight where we would measure versatility because these are very much for specific tasks. I will say this though, this style of emitter where you basically have a clear lens and you have that secondary ring to work with, this ring here as well as the hotspot is going to be much more useful than this one because you can see there's not a lot of light being emitted outside of that center hotspot to use. And if you wanted both, right, and be able to use this for walking so you don't ruin your night vision, you, you can't really get that with this. So this is gonna be less versatile than this flashlight. I don't have a formal rating for these, but just something to mention. Neither one of these are flashlights you're gonna wear with pocket clips. Uh, they're not gonna be attached to your hat. These are gonna be handheld flashlights to look at something much further away. So they are specialized in that sense. All right, now value. So value-wise, these are fantastic. Uh, <laughs> um, based on the availability of flashlights like this from other brands, all of which tend to be quite expensive, uh, the Thru-Night Catapult Mini, I mean, this is the current price. And that's really impressive for all the features that you're getting here. Now, I'm still not 100% sure if I want, if I would want to have one a thrower with this style of lens because it is such a unitasker. But I have to say, if I have only a limited amount of space in my bag and I want to have maybe two flashlights where one does this and the other one is more for close up stuff, I can justify this. And I really, really like that. So great value. Um, I'm still going to give it an average rating until I understand more about this. But I think because, you know what, because it's so small, I think we'll give this a four out of five on value. It really being compact like that, I think offers quite a bit. Now, as far as the Through Night Catapult Pro, I don't have a lot to compare it to right now. But looking around at the prices like the Warrior X Turbo, which is a very similar size, this is a significant decrease in price. So I can't rate it like I would the Warrior X Turbo. It'd have to be better. So it's going to have at least three stars and maybe even four stars for the Catapult Pro. Overall, though, I, I really like this. And I think that specifically this one is versatile enough that you'll probably end up seeing this in a car kit for sure. Um, this will absolutely be a flashlight that I will leave in a car because of what it can do. Um, if I'm pulling out a flashlight, you know, I'm on the side of the road and I need to, you know, flash someone who's on a road that's like a hundred yards, you know, a thousand yards away, I can actually get somebody's attention with this. That's pretty amazing. The only thing I want to check before we go, and I haven't checked it yet, is are there, is there a set of strobe functions besides the just tactical strobe? Okay, guys, it does not appear that there are additional strobe functions in this flashlight, unless I'm completely missing it. And if I, if I have, I'll be looking this up later and mentioning it right here. But that would be a great function if it does, and that would definitely increase its versatility even further. So it would just be a higher rating. So I'll be putting that here if it turns out to be the case. All in all, though, I'm very impressed with both of these flashlights. From a value perspective, the quality is really, really nice on these. And uh, yeah, if you're looking for something that you can put in a car kit or an emergency kit, both of these, I think, could end up being great options. Um, this one for compact and this one for just a much more substantial output. So really great work. And the last thing I want to say here, probably should have said it at the beginning, 
is that both of these flashlights come with spare O-rings as well as replacements for their USB-C rechargeable ports. So both of these have the ability to be recharged directly in the flashlight and they both have IPX8 waterproofing. And the fact that they come with a spare silicon cover is huge. I don't see this enough in flashlights. I can't tell you how many times, I know Roby Bond does it and I really love that about them, but a lot of brands don't and I think it's a huge mistake. It's more important than a lanyard, it's more important than the charging cable which everyone has. This little piece of plastic is potentially going to save me the, the need to reach out to the company or to replace it entirely. So that's a big thing in my opinion. All right, well, that's it. I'm going to let it let us go here, but really cool, fun to play with flashlights, but definitely not toys, okay? Um, you can certainly hurt someone if you flash this into their face, so just keep that in mind. All right, well, thank you for your time, and we'll talk again soon.